long, long time ago, astronomers, scientists and other brainy people decided to design an imaginary grid over our planet, with which we could use to represent any position on Earth. This grid contains a set of horizontal lines starting at the equator and located north and south at regular intervals and are known as lines of latitude. A set of vertical lines run around the Earth and pass through the North and South Poles, known as lines of longitude. The equator is our zero line of latitude and splits the Earth into the Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere. Our zero line of longitude is called Greenwich Mean Time, or GMT, as it passes through Greenwich, London in the UK. This line is also known as the UTC, or Coordinated Universal Time. Any coordinates of latitude north of the equator are referenced in positive values, and coordinates south of the equator are referenced as negative values. On our longitude lines, any coordinates east of the UTC are referenced as positive values, and movement west of the UTC are referenced as negative values. Where our equator and UTC meet, our coordinates will read as zero latitude and zero longitude. This position sits in the ocean of West Africa and is known as Null Island. While there is no actual island, this position is marked by a navigation buoy. Through the years, navigators used various methods to determine positions and headings by using time and the positions of various stars and planets in our solar system. With the right conditions, sextants, for example, could determine coordinates with amazing accuracy. However, you would need a stable vessel to take such readings, and you will also need enough visibility to see both the horizon and certain planets or stars. Nowadays, we rely on satellites to send us this information via GPS receivers at amazing speeds and accuracy, as long as we have at least four satellites verifying our coordinates. Minute changes over time in these readings can also show which way we are headed and at what speeds we are traveling. No more getting lost. Just remember to focus on your surroundings too. A full rotation of the Earth would be a 360 degree rotation from UTC and all the way around back to UTC. If we travel along the equator east, we will eventually end up at the other side of the UTC or 180 degrees east. The same applies if we travel west along the equator, we will eventually end up at the same spot, 180 degrees west. So, 180 degrees is the maximum east reading we can see, as well as the maximum west reading. So, we have established that we can calculate and record our position using degrees. However, the physical distance between degrees is large, leaving us with limited accuracy. We need to subdivide the space to provide precise coordinates. Each degree is made up of 60 minutes. So our reading at this particular point will be 0 degrees and 0 minutes. In this example, we are going to be moving east away from the UTC longitude, and as we do so, our position changes in minutes. Our degree reading will not change as we have not yet recorded a full degree change in position. This will continue up to 59 minutes, after which 60 minutes becomes a full degree, and we arrive on 1 degree east longitude. But we still want more, so every minute will be divided into 60 seconds. Now it's important also to take note of which symbols are depicting which units. We count seconds till we get to 59, after which 60 seconds becomes a full minute. We continue counting minutes up to 59, after which 60 minutes becomes a full degree. More accuracy, you ask? Fine, let's split up our seconds in tenths, one hundredths, or one thousandths of a second, as in this case. 
The difference now is we're no longer counting in 60s. We're counting in 10s, 100s or 1000s. As we continue to move, 0.999 of a second becomes 1 second, which then becomes 59, followed by 1 minute, which becomes 59 minutes, and followed by our full degree. Let's use as an example our entrance to Rebak Marina, Langkawi, Malaysia. Our latitude is 6 degrees north of the equator and is represented as a positive or north value. It is situated at 17 minutes and for further accuracy is at 30.176 seconds. Our longitude reading is 99 degrees east of the UTC and as such is represented as a positive value or an east reading. Our coordinates in minutes are listed as 41 minutes and for further accuracy our seconds are represented as 42.618 seconds. Chart plotters can also represent coordinates in degrees only, but if we want to convert information to paper charts, we need the traditional degree and time format. Let's have a look at basic route between two points on a chart. We will have starting coordinates as well as destination coordinates. An electronic chart plotter will tell us this bearing or direction we need to travel, in this case 315 degrees. Now, note the T which is listed with this heading. What does this T represent? All our longitude lines run and intersect each other at the North Pole, and this is known as True North. However, our handheld and other magnetic compasses will be pointing to a different North, known as Magnetic North. So there is a difference between True and Magnetic North, known as Magnetic Variation. This is changing annually and varies depending on where we are in relation to that magnetic north. All electronic chart plotters, paper charts and GPS systems are pointing to true north, while our magnetic compasses on board will be pointing to the magnetic north. Now this is no problem if we are using electronic systems only, or even when taking readings from paper charts and entering them into chart plotters. But these systems need power, so if you find yourself without power, or if you have a system failure, we will have to rely on a magnetic compass. So where can we find this magnetic variation and convert the bearings accordingly? One place is to look at your actual charts. We are looking for something called the compass rows which will show us this information. This information can be found listed here and in the following format. When this particular chart was printed, the variation was 4 degrees 15 minutes west for this particular area. Because the variation changes annually, it's important to know when the chart was printed in this case, 2018. The compass rose also tells us that the annual change is 15 minutes to the east. This means the variation will be getting less each year. If the year is now 2023, the chart would have been printed five years ago. So the total change would be five times 15 minutes, which totals 75 minutes. We have already learned that there are only 60 minutes in a degree. So 75 minutes will work out to one degree and 15 minutes change east over the past five years. Our original variation was west and the change is to the east. So we will have to deduct one degree 15 minutes from the original four degrees 15 minutes, which gives us a current variation of three degrees west. Stay with me people. If our original heading was 315 true, how do we convert this to a magnetic bearing? Here we will have to try and remember a little rhyme. If variation is west, compass is best. If variation is east, compass is least. As our variation is west, we will need to work on the compass is best, which means that our magnetic reading should be greater than our true reading. We add our variation to our true bearing, which gives us a magnetic reading of 318 degrees. Electronic chart plotters can provide us with coordinates, bearings and distances. But what if we need to work with paper charts? Once we have established two waypoints on a chart, we can go ahead and draw the line between the two, which represent our route. To get the best results with a manual chart plotter, make sure that the chart plotter is in line or square to the lines of latitude and longitude on the chart. 
With the center of the compass rose on our departure point, we can determine our heading, in this case 315 degrees true. So what about distance? How do we calculate how long this route is? We take our dividers and place it on the two waypoints on our chart which represent the distance of our route. If we look at the information on our charts, we will see our longitude readings printed the top and the bottom of the chart, and our latitude readings printed on the sides. When we calculate distance on a chart, we want to use the latitude readings on the chart which will be found on the sides of the chart. We place the dividers on the latitude scale of the chart on the minute bar, as it's a distance in minutes we are first looking for. We count the minutes between the two points of our dividers, and in this case come to seven and a half minutes. Each minute of latitude represents one nautical mile, so our 7.5 minutes has become 7.5 miles and is the distance we need to travel. So what exactly is a nautical mile, and how does it differ from a regular mile? A full rotation along the UTC is 360 degrees, and we know each degree is made up of 60 minutes, so the total rotation would work out to 21,600 minutes. The circumference of the Earth around this route is 24,901 miles. Divide this by 21,600 minutes, and we can see that a nautical mile is slightly longer than a regular mile. Now, what is a knot? Yes, we know this is a knot, but a knot is also a unit of speed, or nautical miles per hour. Our distance that we measured was 7.5 minutes, which we converted to 7.5 nautical miles. If we have an average cruising speed of 5 knots, we can take our distance, divide it by speed, and find out how much time it would take for this route, in this case, 1.5 hours. If you made it this far, thank you and well done. Your support is much appreciated. We look forward to seeing you soon. Till then, bye-bye.